Hi friends, in this video I am going to show you how Watchtower Study Article 46, which will be studied at Jehovah's Witness meetings the second week of January 2021, is totally filled with fear and lies. At the end of this video, I'm going to explain what's really going on and tie it all together. So take a look. As the Jehovah's Witness is now most likely sitting in their homes dressed in suits and dresses, standing up, reading song number 55 entitled, Fear Them Not, these are some of the lines they will read. Fear them not, O oh my beloved, though their boasting threats may fly, though they threaten and revile to mislead and to beguile, nor their persecutions heat. Down at the bottom, this is what the indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness is singing. Though you die upon the field, even death to me will yield. Fear them not who kill the body, but cannot destroy the soul. Friends, this right here is taken from Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, which says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The point in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, that Jesus was trying to make is that temporary death is a slight thing compared with eternal death. Jesus is directing his followers, look, don't so much fear the temporary death, but make sure your doctrine is right. Make sure you have the doctrine that leads to eternal life so that your eternal soul, your eternal life is secure. That's what this verse Mean. Yet Watchtower cleverly leaves this out because they believe in the doctrine, doctrine of annihilation, which basically states that at death, the soul ceases to exist. So they cannot include the latter part of this verse because it refutes their doctrine. Do you see how clever and deceptive they are? So the title of this study article is Take Courage, Jehovah is your helper. Paragraph three contains yet more fear mongering. These paragraphs are talking about Paul and the trials Paul had faced. Up at the top in talking about Paul, it says that they tried to kill him. The next day when Paul was brought before the Sanhedrin, he was almost torn apart by his enemies. At the end of paragraph three, it says, at that point, Paul may have wondered how much longer can I endure this treatment? Can you see there on the right how Watchtower compares the angels assisting Paul's near death and torture to how the angels protect the publishers as well? Do you see the hidden message here and how it can cripple a person with fear and dread and concern? But we're going to see this theme go out, go throughout the entire article. Do you see there it says Paul was on a ship hit, heading for Italy when the vessel encountered such a heavy storm that the crew and passengers thought they would die. In moving along down the paragraph at what I underlined, it says, because some days are difficult for us to endure. For instance, when a loved one dies, we must deal with that pain, not just for a few days, but likely for many years. It also talks about difficult days for those facing old age and difficult days for those facing feelings of depression. So in paragraph six, it basically had said that Jesus promised to be with them always. They cite again, Matthew 28, but Jesus was talking to his followers there. And in those verses, as I mentioned in every video, because they bring this up in every video, Jesus tells them the manner in which they should be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me remind you how the organized to do Jehovah's Will Watchtower publication outlines how a Jehovah's Witness should be baptized. On pages 206 and 207, it says, at the conclusion of the baptism talk, the speaker will ask the baptism candidates to stand and answer the following two questions in a loud voice. One, have you repented of your sins, dedicated yourselves to Jehovah, and accepted his way of salvation through Jesus Christ? Two, do you understand that your baptism identifies you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with Jehovah's organization? Affirmative answers to these questions constitute a public declaration by the baptism candidates that they have put faith in the ransom and have unreservedly dedicated themselves to Jehovah, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Friends, this is very, very dangerous. 
They are not baptizing in the manner that Jesus Christ had said in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let's take a look at what Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 says. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you see why I say to you it's very dangerous what the Jehovah's Witness organization is doing to their followers, their publishers? They're misleading them to get baptized a different way. They're citing Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10, and it says something completely different than what they proclaim. It's very dangerous because salvation is found in no other name other than the name Jesus Christ. But listen, let's continue to move on. Paragraph 7 says, in the box, God's word assures us that Jehovah helps us by means of his angels. For example, angels give us support and guidance as we preach the good news of the kingdom to people of every nation and tribe and tongue. Notice they state in bold there to read Revelation 14 verse 6. That says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Friends, an angel is preaching the everlasting gospel during the tribulation. Verse seven, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth the sea and the fountains of waters. It's the angel that's preaching. It's the angel that has the everlasting gospel, not the gospel of the kingdom. There is nothing in this verse that supports that angels assist Jehovah's Witnesses preaching Jehovah's kingdom in this modern day. Nothing at all, friends, they're lying to you. Paragraphs nine through 11 contain more talk about Paul being killed and facing trials. You can see it right there. So paragraph 12 moves on and makes a comparison with Paul being a prisoner and the soldiers wanting to kill all of the prisoners with modern day witnesses who Jehovah may help. Do you see that there? The knife blade and the pious Jehovah's Witness prisoner. Could you imagine the indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness studying these articles, article after article, talk after talk after talk about fear and killing and death and torture and prison and go bags. I couldn't imagine being a Jehovah's Witness still. I'm so glad I got out when I did. Moving along, the next few paragraphs have more speculation and more fear mongering. Take a look. They willingly risk their lives. Only later during the rough voyage did they learn that their lives would be spared. Paul must have offered a heartfelt prayer to Jehovah, thanking him for the help he provided. Paragraph 18 talks about what Paul must have thought and has to reiterate that he would be arriving as a prisoner. How encouraged he must have been when he saw brothers from Rome waiting along the road to greet him. And of course they have to show what looks like a dying man in a hospital bed at the bottom of the page. Paragraph 19 puts things into perspective by giving counsel to reach out to others in need. Common sense, friends. Do we need an article about Paul's trials and near death and killing and torture and persecution? Do we really need that to learn that we are to reach out to others who are in need? Makes me wonder if there is another agenda because seriously, there is so much more hope in learning about Paul's suffering and Paul's real message. So this article ends there on the bottom right with stating that Jehovah is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? They cite Hebrews chapter 13, verse six, and I wanna read that in a few of the verses after. Verse six says, so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now here's some really good counsel. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. That's it for the article, friends. <laughs> That's basically it. 
But anyway, I'm going to sum all of this up in just a few verses. Acts chapter 9 records Saul's encounter on the road to Damascus with the risen Christ. And he said, meaning Paul, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. Is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks? And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord, Jesus, said to him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what you must do. Now in verse 15 and 16, this is Jesus speaking to Ananias about Paul. But the Lord, Jesus, said to him, Go your way, for he is a chosen vessel to me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings, and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Friends, listen, Paul was persecuted for Christ. There was no Jehovah, the God of Watchtower around. The Jehovah God of Watchtower is a false God. The Jehovah of Watchtower is trying to steal, kill, and destroy their followers by forcing them to accept his way of salvation, which is different than the salvation taught by Paul that is through Christ alone. The, the Jehovah God of the watchtower is making them declare loudly that they agree to be baptized in his name, not in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Being a part of Jehovah's earthly organization being baptized into that earthly organization will not lead to salvation, friends. Salvation is found in Jesus Christ alone. The Apostle Paul said these words in the book of Galatians. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Then down at the bottom, Galatians 2. Paul says, For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live to God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, not in the Son of God. He has the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, friends. The truth is found in scripture. These magazines contain lies. We don't need to follow the law. We don't need to follow rules. We don't need to go to meetings. We don't need to count time. We don't need to study Watchtower magazines. We need to have faith in Jesus Christ and that he died for us and that he was resurrected according to scripture. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says that you are saved by grace through faith. It's not of works lest any man should boast. So when every knee bows before Jesus Christ, nobody will be able to say, I was a pioneer. I was a circuit overseer. I was a governing body member. I did this. I did that. Mm -mm. All he wants to know is, do you know who I am? Do you believe in me? Did you put your faith and trust in me? And if you'll say, well, yeah, I mean, I, I did. I went to all the meetings and I, I did this for you. And you know what? Unfortunately, many will hear him say, get away from me. I never knew you. You listened to a different gospel. You trusted a different God. Friends, don't let that be you. Cry out to him today. It's a matter of prayer between you and him. Just cry out to him. He will hear your prayer. The Holy Spirit will intercede for you, even if you don't know how to pray. He knows your heart. Do it today, friends. Thanks for watching, friends. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.